Hello everyone and welcome back to another a Masi chess game between two chess legends uh, from 1870 from London, England. And in this chess game we have Wilhelm Steinitz with the white pieces and his opponent is Henry Edward Bird. Also a legend, a British, uh, the British chess master and one of the leading chess players at the time. The last recorded chess games between Steinitz and Henry Edward Bird is from 1899. They played many chess games in their lifetime record, so let's see what happened in this chess game. They also played some matches. So this is not from any match, so I believe this is uh, from a chess tournament from 1870. Steinitz starts the game with e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, and this is the Italian game, of course. And then the Evans Gambit, the typical romantic style of chess. Bishop takes on b4, c3, bishop goes back and Steinitz castled, d6, d4, e takes on d4, c takes on d4, bishop goes back, knight to c3, knight to a5, bishop goes back and then c5, challenging the center, d5 by Wilhelm Steinitz, closing, Developing the bishop and pinning the knight. Knight to e2. It looks like not uh, not a very logical move because uh, black can capture the knight and damage the pawn structure in the king side. But actually, surprisingly, the computer chess engine agrees with Wilhelm Steinitz. We have queen to f6, not capturing the knight. Bert also saw what might happen to him if capturing the knight. If capturing the knight. Can you see the best move for white? What would you do? Well, you need to always look for the checks. Queen to a4, this is check and where is the king queen? Of course, if blocking with the queen, that would be a disaster because of bishop to b5, pinning and winning. And after moving the king, capturing the bishop and actually white is doing very good job. For a cost of creating weakness in the king side, black is losing the casting rights and actually white is doing very well in this position. So knight to e2 by Wilhelm Steinitz. But not capturing queen to f6 and then bishop to g5 attacking the queen defending. And another very exciting move by Wilhelm Steinitz, he played knight to f4. Provoking queen takes on g5 and this is what happened. But now in between move check, bishop to b5, checking the king and black is still losing the casting rights. Of course if blocking with the uh, bishop, that would be a blunder because of capturing the queen. So moving the king and then capturing the queen, bishop takes on d1, rook from a takes on d1 and rook to f8. Targeting the king, rook from d to e1. And in this position, actually Wilhelm Steinitz is a pawn down, Bert is a pawn up. But uh, we can say that Henry Edward Bert is not doing well because of the position of the king and threatening to push the pawn. So asking a question, pushing the pawn, attacking the knight, what would you do in this position? It is white to move and win, actually, believe it or not. Wilhelm Steinitz, he played the best move according to the computer chess engine. So let me give you a couple of seconds. If you need, you can also pause the video. And your time is starting from now. Guess the move for white. White plays a move and wins. What would you do in this position? Okay, so let me show you the move. Wilhelm Steinitz picked his knight and he played knight from g to e6. What a move by Wilhelm Steinitz. Attacking the rook and if defending the rook, actually there are not so many safe spots, but if defending the rook, then also capturing the pawn. And it looks like a very dangerous position. So black captured the knight and then here comes knight to g6. This is check. And where is the king going? So also defending the rook, but then capturing the rook with check and black must play king to f6. This is the only sensible move because if something like this, this is actually winning the house knight to g6, forking the king and to rook 
and that's all over. So Black must resign because of this pesky knight. So this is why knight takes on h8, king goes down, and then another very strong move by Wilhelm Steinitz f4, knight to e7, stepping aside and planning to capture the knight. But it is white to move. What would you do in this position? Of course, it is pushing the pawn, e5, and where is the king going? We have king to f5, and let's see what happens if capturing the pawn, then capturing back, and this is winning the rook and the chess game. Black must resign. So this is why knight to e7, and then e5, king goes down, and Steinitz is announcing the season. What season? Hawk hunting season? Bird hunting season. <laughs> hunting the bird. The king hunting, actually. Bishop to d3, king to g4, rook up, capturing the knight, but Napsteinitz checks the king, king to h5. Actually, uh, you know what? If king to h4, that is also not going to help matters because of bishop to e2 and how to defend the checkmate threat, rook to h3, so bird plate, king to, king to h5, and then bishop check, king to h4, and Steinitz checkmated Bert on the board. Bert didn't resign. He played rook to h3. Checkmate. And this is the last move in the database. Wilhelm Steinitz delivered checkmate and checkmated his strong rival Henry Edward Bert. What a beautiful chess game by Wilhelm Steinitz. At move 28, he checkmated Henry Edward Bert. What a beautiful chess game by Wilhelm Steinitz. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time with more interactive chess games from the history of chess. Take care and bye bye.